Today, I'm taking on the 100 animal challenge. And to make things more interesting, I decided to create a game that will push me to be even more creative. For this video, I'm only going to do 10 animals, but don't worry, I'll be covering all categories of animals in the upcoming videos. So here I have two plates with 20 animals and 20 challenges in each. I'll be picking up one of each and I'll create whatever it says. For this challenge, I will be using the Ohuhu Mixed Media Sketchbook and at the moment, I'm always trying to use the sketchbook because it has a lot of pages and my goal is to be able to fill it up by the end of this year. So I'm going to start by shuffling the animals and the challenges in a big jar. So grab some snacks or your sketchbook, sit back and let's dive into the animal kingdom together. So here we have our first animal and it is uh, Martin and here we have three random red supplies. In this box I have all the random red supplies that I could find and I'm going to close my eyes and pick three random ones. Okay so here we have the Windsor and Newton watercolor pro marker, a Zeller duo and then we have a red Stedler 320. So before we start drawing the animal, let's start swatching the supplies. I'm kind of happy that they're all dual tip and I can actually add water to this one. So that will definitely help me create more variations. I'm going to start sketching the pose of the animal with the fine liner tip which is also a watercolor marker so I will be able to also add water to this and see what I can create okay so apparently I'm drawing a raccoon because this looks nothing like a martin but let's try again and do a few more and see what that's gonna turn out like So here I'm going to try another one and I'm going to try a different pose this time. By the way, I'm using references for this because I would have no idea what the animal actually looks like. Um, and even with references, it's still hard to make it look like a Martin. Because the thing is that we see dogs and cats all the time, so it will be easier to draw them because it's kind of like you've seen this before. But like with the Martin, I, I'm not familiar with them and I haven't seen them, so it's a bit harder to get the right proportions. But I'm pretty sure that along the way it will improve. And maybe this is why I wasn't able to complete 20 in a week. Maybe I should have stuck to one pose and that way I would be able to create more than 10 for this video. So nine more to go. And this time we have a porcupine and the challenge is three random Ohuhu markers. So what I'm going to do is I will grab the Ohuhu marker bag and I will spin it a few times. I will then pick up a color and spin it again and so on until I have three colors. So here are the three markers that we got. The light prawn, terracotta and tea rose. I'm going to start swatching the colors on the paper so that I see exactly what they look like. And I'm going to start sketching the first pose. To be honest, I'm not really sure like what color to use for what, but I realized that they do have this striped hair. So I'm thinking to use a light pink and the brown to create that kind of look. This combination of colors really remind me of like a strawberry cake. I don't know why, but it definitely doesn't give me porcupine vibes. <laughs> And here I went with mostly like the, the dark brown for their body and then I used the light and middle pink color for the hairs. When I draw with Ohuhu markers, I usually go over them with a black fine liner pen. I just feel like it gives a really nice look. Now I know that this is not part of the challenge, but I really want to make them look better. So I'm just going to go over them with a fine liner pen. And then let me know down in the comments if you think it was better with or without the fine liner. So let's see what we're gonna get next. This time I'm actually going to start from the challenges. And the challenge is ballpoint pen. And the animal that we got is a hedgehog. 
Oh my god, I actually spelled it wrong, I'm sorry about that. So again, I'm just going to scribble a bit on the side just to see how dark and how light I can go with the ballpoint pen so that I know how I can use it in the drawings. I've never actually done a drawing with a ballpoint pen, so that's like a first one for me, but it has been something that I've been wanting to try. And I feel like it's much easier to draw the spikes of the hedgehog other than the porcupine, because the hedgehog is like just random ones there and then, whereas the porcupine had that kind of pattern of light and dark, so it was harder. So I found this really cute pose on Pinterest, and I really want to try and draw it. It's just a hedgehog hanging over a piece of wood and it's really cute. Okay, and we are done from the hedgehog as well. And it's time for the next one. So this time we have gray paper and the animal is a ferret. So I'm just going to attach a piece of gray paper onto the sketchbook so that that way we have everything in one sketchbook. And recently I've been wanting to try the Micron fineliner pens and I went to a local store and they had really really tiny ones. I'm actually going to try them for this challenge. And I will also be using two white pens. One is the Pilot Choose 7 and the other one is the Sakura Jelly 8. I have used the Sakura Jelly 8 before and it's actually part of the list of supplies that I often use. So all the links will be down in the description. I'm going to be using a pencil to sketch out the pose of the ferret. And again, in front of me, I have some references. In the reference, the ferret is white. So I want to do most of the fur with the white pen. And I really can't get myself to do the face, right? So I'm just going to stick another piece of paper so that I can try it again. I feel like it looks better this time, but it's still not what I'm looking for. So let me just draw a smiley face for now and we'll deal with it later. Maybe. <laughs> I found this cute pose of the ferret actually like climbing a trunk. So I'm going to try and draw this over here. I really love ferrets. I just find them so funny and the way their body moves and how elongated they are. I think they're really cute. I also don't like the face on this one. So let me just stick on another smiley face. I really love the combination of these three colors together, the gray paper with the black fineliner pen and the white pen. I feel like it gives it a really nice touch. And since I didn't manage to draw the two ferrets with the face, I'm actually going to try and find the reference and focus on the face. And it doesn't look too bad, I'm kind of happy with it. And we're done from this challenge as well. Now let's move on to the next one. Here we have a beaver and the challenge is three random purple supplies. So again, I have the box here with the purple supplies and I'm going to start picking three random ones. And here I got an Ohuhu marker and a Stedler tick marker and the last one is a pastel i don't know if it's just me but i really find it hard using pastels because they're just so messy and so hard to control so i really hope that i'll manage to combine these three well together and i want to use the pastel for the lighter color of the beaver because i can use a tissue paper to lighten it out and I'm going to draw a big one over here because I really want to focus on the pose of the beaver standing up. And since I feel like beavers are famous for their teeth, I want to make like a close up of the beaver's face um, where it really shows the teeth because I feel like they are so cute. So I really want to implement this pose in my sketchbook. And then for the last pose, I just wanted to focus more of how the proportions of the body are rather than the fur and the face. And I'm really happy with how this turned out. And we are done from this as well. Now let's move on to the next one. And here we have a shrew. And the challenge is ink. 
I actually included this challenge because I recently got a dip pen set. I know it's used for calligraphy, but I really wanted to try it out. So I said, let me just include it as part of the challenge. And as for the ink, I will be using the Windsor and Newton ink. So I'm just going to swatch out all the different pen sizes just to see all the variations that I can work with. And it's actually really comfortable to hold and draw with, so I will definitely be using this much more. So this time I'm just going to start sketching with what just happened. Okay, let's move on like nothing just happened. <laughs> I really feel like today is not the day because I just dropped the tip inside the ink jar and I'm trying to use the scissors to get it out but this is taking really long and after almost 20 minutes I managed to find it. I think this is the most animal that I'm actually enjoying drawing. I was actually really amazed when I saw shrews because they are so tiny and cute I really love their long nose and it's really fun to draw. So I'm sorry if you see me skipping from one animal to the other, that would be because I forgot to actually record. And here I found the reference of the shrew yawning and it's so cute. So I really wanted to include it. Okay, four more to go. And here we have a bank bowl and the challenge is black paper. So I'm just going to stick again the black paper onto the sketchbook so that everything remains together. I will be using the metallic colors and again the two white pens. I'm also going to be using a white blender and I also have a white pencil. I'm going to start sketching with the blender and I'm going to go for a standing up pose because it really looks cute. And this type of mice are actually brownish in color, so I'll probably be using mostly the brown color of the metallic colors. And I'm actually using the blender to blend in the markers just before they dry and it really gives them a nice effect. I also love using the Liquitex black marker because it's acrylic paint but it's just so easy to use and it dries really quick. And I love how when I apply the white metallic color it just looks like I've done nothing but then it just appears over time and it just looks so cool. I really really love how these little ones turned out, they're so cute. Now let's move on to the next one. And here we have an otter and the challenge is one line drawing random fine liner. So I will be putting the fine liner pens that I own in a box and I'm going to close my eyes and choose a random one. This is really hard because I really don't know from which part of the body to start so that I avoid doing double lines, but it's literally impossible. I'm surprising how it still kind of looks like an otter and I'm managing to get the poses quite okay-ish. And this is a pretty fast drawing and I wanted to just do it just for fun because I feel like it's a fun challenge where you don't need to focus too much on a detail because you can't put in any detail and it's just about trying to get the right proportions. And here the otter is holding some stones. So I'm happy this actually looks like he's holding something because it was really hard to draw this pose. And here I found a pose of an otter just chilling, but I didn't leave enough space between the two of them, so now it looks like it's resting on its friend, which is really cute. This is just a pose of an otter sitting and chilling in its natural habitat but I really have no idea what I did here because I kind of messed up one of the legs so then I had to go over it again and now it just doesn't even look like an otter anymore. 
and I also forgot to finish the line so here I'll just be going to complete the line just for the sake of completing it that was really short but it was actually a really fun challenge to do and the next one that we have is a squirrel and the challenge is three random paints and the three paints that we've picked up are the Liquitex soft body acrylic and the blue and yellow Windsor and Newton watercolor and recently I bought this starfish plate that I found at one of the stores and I thought it was really cute to be used as a palette so I'll be using this one today to mix in the paint so let's start swatching the paints onto the paper I'm adding water just to see how light and how dark each paint can get and I feel like with the yellow is a bit hard because even when I add water to it, it's still very, very bright. So I feel like it's a bit of a hard color to work with. I'm going to start sketching with a pencil. And here I'm going to use the blue for the tail of the squirrel. But I will be using lighter and darker blue so that I can create strokes to represent the fur of the squirrel. And since it's my favorite animal, I want to go a bit more in detail with this one. And I found this cute reference of a squirrel holding a mushroom. And to balance out the colors, I'm drawing the mushroom in blue with a bit of yellow spots. And the stem of the mushroom, I want it to be very, very light because that's usually white. I'm also drawing a bit of grass at the bottom and I mixed the blue and the yellow to create a green. So I'll just be drawing a few strokes to represent the grass. I'm really enjoying painting this. I found another reference of another squirrel kind of looking for food and I'm going to draw it on the right side. So since I chose a bit of a detailed reference and I'm going to also be drawing a bit of the environment, I chose to only do two squirrels. This time I want to make the body of the squirrel in blue and again I will be going lighter and darker to create the fur. But I will keep the nose and the eyes blue as well because I feel like otherwise it will look a bit creepy. And for this one, I'm filling in the tail with yellow. And I'm going to include a bit of green in the squirrel's tail because I feel like it needs more texture. I'm also using the green to create some grass that is kind of hanging out from the branch that the squirrel is walking on. And I really love the way this is turning out. Here again, I'm going to draw the mushrooms in blue, but I decided to leave the stem in yellow so that the colors will be more balanced out. And there is only one more to go. So let's find out what the last animal is. And here we have a fennec fox. And the challenge is three random blue supplies. So again, I'm going to put all my blue supplies in a box and I will close my eyes, shuffle them a bit around and pick three random ones. And here we got two acrylic paints and one blue pen. I really think that the fennec fox is really cute and I just love how long and big their ears are and I feel like it's going to be really fun painting them. So I'm going to start sketching with a pencil and I'm going to use a mixture of the light and the dark paint to create the fur of the fox. And for the eyes, I'm using the pen because it's really easy to control and I also want to make sure that I get the right shape of the eye. So for the next pose, I'm using the pen to fill in the eyes, the nose and the claws of the fennec fox. I'm sorry again I forgot to record the finishing of the second pose but I will show you at the end how they all turned out. And with the pencil I'm sketching our last pose and actually our last animal for today's video and I'm starting with the pen again filling in the eye and the nose of the fennec fox and for this one I'm actually going to be using the pen to create the outline of the body. I'm also filling in the body of the fox with the lighter paint and I've added a lot of water to this one to keep it as light as possible and then I'll just be going over with the lighter paint to create the shadows and the fur of the fennec fox. I really love how this pose is turning out and I think it's actually my favorite one from all the animals that I've drawn today. And now it's time to see the final reveal of the 10 animals. I 
to thank you all who have been supporting me so far and if you're still watching this video i really appreciate you let me know down in the comments which animal is your favorite leave a like if you like this video and subscribe for more stay positive and i'll see you in the next video bye